Well, the first game of the Dennis Gates era may have been a little too close for comfort, but you can't say it was boring. That's for darn sure. And also, got to be honest, I'm a little surprised. Isaiah Mosley's minutes were only 16 last night. Is that something to worry about? Well, let's talk about that and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. This is your team every day here on the Locked On Sports Network. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And you know what? Just quickly, of course, we're going to talk a whole bunch about basketball. But just real quick here at the top, in case you missed it, the New Mexico football game, the next home game for Mizzou football, 6.30 p.m. Central Start on ESPNU. Of course, you can find that on Sling TV. But you know what? Missouri had a wildly, wildly entertaining basketball game last night. As I said in the open, a little bit too close for comfort there at the end. But just an incredibly fast-paced basketball game. You can see why Missouri, without maybe a true center on the roster, maybe this is just Dennis Gates the way he wants to play. Again, as I've said before, I think we'd see quite a bit different of a tempo if seven foot three Western Kentucky center Jamarian Sharp were here. But we don't need to worry about that. This is the team we have, and honestly, for the most part, I've liked what I have seen. Now, the one thing that has been a bit of a surprise to me is the usage of a former Rockbridge guard, a former Missouri State guard, Isaiah Mosley. And honestly, even though he only, only, quote unquote, I'm going to use that that quote there. Why am I quoting myself? I think people need to stop saying quote unquote so much. And I'm going to put myself in that camp as well. But for Mosley to play only 16 minutes, well, let's keep it in perspective. He actually played quite a bit in the first half. And it wasn't as though there was a ton of guys who were playing 30-plus minutes. Kobe Brown led the team with 30 minutes. Most of the guys who played a lot were, were say, 22 minutes to 25, something like that. So mostly a little bit lower than that. And in the exhibition game, him not starting, him not starting here once again. By the way, the idea that that starting five was picked at random Not sure how much I'm believing that at this point, considering it was also the starting five that we saw here in the first real game against Southern Indiana. That's feeling like less of an accident at this point. But I do think we're probably overanalyzing it a little bit here. The people who have real consternation about Isaiah Mosley, to some extent, I I get it if you're a big Rockbridge supporter, which many, many Mizzou fans are, for sure. It just seems like to me that Dennis Gates is taking the long view of this program and and not worrying about juicing his Kim Palm ratings, for instance, to try to get every single blowout victory he can here. Because this schedule is set up very deliberately. You've got seven home games here in November against relatively weak competition. Other than a couple games, you've got teams that are 200 plus in terms of rankings coming into the season. So this does afford Gates an opportunity to experiment quite a bit. And just for instance, he was asked about about why he didn't switch up the defense in the second half. Obviously, Missouri's the defense, a little bit of a concern at this point. And obviously, Southern Indiana was just completely red hot from three-point land the entire game. In particular, the second half, they shot over 80% from downtown, over 50% from three in the game. And Gates basically just said, hey, I could have switched to his own, but I want these guys to learn. I'm not going to rescue them right now. He wants them to go out and fail and learn from it. And that's something I've actually talked about 
in terms of quarterback play. When we talk about football, I think everybody has to do this, especially at quarterbacks, especially basketball, especially everything in sports. How are you going to learn and get better if you aren't afforded the opportunity to fail? Well, it seems like Dennis Gates definitely understands that. And I just think you take a bigger look at this team, I don't think Missouri's going to have too much trouble scoring. Defense could be an issue all year, not only for a, a lack of rim protection, but really Southern Indiana was getting to the basket a little bit too easily at times. The transition defense was all over the place, was just not good. And the communication left a lot to be desired too. If Missouri is going to switch ball screens a lot, and screens away from the ball as well, well, we're going to have to get better in terms of communication. Again, it's really, really early in the season to draw any massive conclusions here. I think Dennis Gates is trying to figure out exactly what he wants from this team, and I think he knows what he has in Isaiah Mosley. And I would be worried about this if I had seen Isaiah, if I had seen him sulking. But I've seen his body language, and he seems fine. Second half, he was dabbing people up and, you know, smile on his face. There was no no shoulders hanging, no no heads hanging, anything like that. So I just think if you're going to overanalyze this really early minutes distribution, I think you may be overanalyzing it because I think Mosley is going to be fine. I think he's going to have a big part. He's going to be a big part of this team. And even if his role ultimately is as the first guy off the bench, well, that's okay too. We've seen guys like Michael Dixon from Missouri be a huge part of an offense and of a team as the first guy off the bench. Heck, I hate to bring this up, and I promise this we're not going to get a weekly Trevin Brazil update, but in the Arkansas opener last night, Brazil came off the bench, scored 21 points, grabbed 12 rebounds in the opener, played the third most minutes on the squad. So clearly, you can still come off the bench and be a big-time contributor. One of the main reasons I just bring that up, I saw some Missouri fans thinking that, oh, well, if Brazil's not going to start, he made a huge mistake transferring to Arkansas. Well, clearly he's going to be a big part of that rotation. Again, no more Trevin Brazil updates as we go along here. We're over it. It's done. But clearly the idea that Missouri wouldn't be better with him on the roster, especially considering the kind of rim protection Missouri could need, well, I think that's just silly. But hey, Speaking of guys who have worn number 23 for Missouri, the new number 23 for the Tigers, Aiden Shaw, really looked impressive last night in relatively limited action. So let's talk about Aiden and more notes on Mizzou basketball coming right up. But first, I want to tell you that this season, this week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as the driver themselves. When I think of the unbelievable abilities on the field for this week's thrilling moment, well, it has to be, got to give some, some love to Brady Cook. That 20-yard touchdown run, breaking the tackle, spinning out of it, Missouri getting up 17-14. to 14. I got to be honest, if momentum is a real thing, I really thought, no, it is a real thing, but how predictive is momentum? At that moment, I thought, Missouri's got it, baby. We're going to win. It really felt like it, but unfortunately, a little bit of disappointment at the end. But you know what's not going to disappoint you? It's Nissan. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier, Armada, or Pathfinder today. Available now at NissanUSA.com. Thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the box score and behind the scenes with local experts and insights. Only Locked on can provide Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get finer podcasts. And I tell you, I think we've got a finer true freshman 
at forward at the moment. Aiden Shaw very much looking the part so far. Certainly he's going to have a lot of things to work on in his young career. The 18-year-old just getting started here, just like Dennis Gates had his first game in college yesterday. But considering he played, well, let's see. Let me let me get the numbers here. I have them in front of me. He played 12 minutes. They were 12 very productive minutes, scoring nine points, hitting four of his five shots, including a three. Mostly, though, I was just impressed to see him playing really, really hard. I liked that he was going going after the boards hard. Just looks really bouncy and athletic, which is, which is not a surprise whatsoever, but also just fluid. That's something that when I saw him in, in high school, you go back and if you, for whatever reason you want to see my analysis of Aiden Shaw from high school, that was one thing that really stood out to me. He was just a fluid athlete. Well, he's actually even much more explosive than I realized too. If you've watched any of his Twitter videos, his Instagram videos from this summer that have gone viral, the guy has an amazing, amazing vertical leap. And that shot looks sustainable too. That wasn't just, oh, I'm going to pump this thing up and hope it goes in. He's got really solid shot mechanics. So obviously I'm really excited about Aiden Shaw to the point where I think by the time Speaking of Trevin Brazil, I, I hate to bring him up again. Sorry, I promised I wouldn't. I lied. But I only bring him up again because I think like Brazil, as the year went along last season, you saw him become one of the top five guys, a, a surefire starter, an important part of the team. Well, I think similarly, that could happen with Shaw too. Maybe to a slightly lesser extent in terms of minutes, just with all the different productive bodies we have on this team. But I really think that Aiden Shaw is a definite keeper. Thought that coming into the year, but really good to see it stand out in college as well. I will say that just beyond Isaiah Mosley and his minutes distribution, just in general, I'm not a giant fan of playing a huge rotation of guys. It seems like Missouri is going to play 10 guys right now. Maybe that as the season goes along, that whittles down just a tiny bit. But at the very least, at least Missouri is playing a lot of guys and playing very, very fast, at least in this first game. And I didn't have the numbers from the exhibition game, but Missouri with 82 possessions in this ball game, either 81 or 82, excuse me, I'm losing it in my notes here. But the point is Missouri averaged 67 possessions per game in the last season of Conzo Martin. That's about average for him. Well, 81 possessions for Missouri, a full 14 more. That's a big percentage. And I think the 10,700 fans, Missouri fans that showed up yesterday, I think they noticed. They had to have noticed that was a completely different style of basketball than we've been used to for the last few seasons under Martin. So that's something that is really going to continue. It it seems like that appears to be Dennis Gates' preferred style of basketball. Now, I will say, again, back to the rotations, generally, especially in college basketball, when it's only a 40-minute game, you've, only, you've got four television timeouts, four media timeouts per half. I think it's pretty easy to play a tight rotation of seven or eight guys. But if you're going to play up-tempo like this, that does make some more sense. Again, sort of to my point of a little bit of worry. I thought the first 10 minutes from Missouri of that ball game, the offense was really good. The ball movement was really good. And then once Missouri got up maybe 25 to 12 or something like that, it sort of felt like guys were like, okay, we're going to have a blowout here. I'm going to start trying to get my shot a little bit. And to me, that's the worry of having too big of a rotation is if you have too many guys who think they should play well, Maybe they don't play within the team framework maybe as much as they possibly would if they were getting the minutes they felt they were entitled to, right? This is kind of the the always the push and pull of basketball. It's not an individual sport. You got there's one ball, there's only so many minutes. So just finding that proper chemistry is going to be the challenge that Dennis Gates has and really I think this is kind of smart. He's got a whole new roster of people seven games against competition that isn't all that strong. I think this was, again, a very deliberate choice 
in terms of scheduling. So why not take advantage of it? I actually think Dennis Gates is doing a smart thing here. And by the way, Isaiah Mosley, if you want to take a bet on what his minutes are going to be, I, I pretty darn sure they're going to be averaging over 20 or 25 once we get to SEC time. Maybe he just feels like he knows what he has in Mosley at this point. And coming up after the bizarre play in the Missouri Kentucky football game, of course, the roughing the punter play. I asked you people, well, what is the luckiest, most bizarre play that went in Missouri's direction, in Missouri's favor? Well, I immediately realized I forgot an easy one. So I want to reveal that on the other side. But first, yes, Bet Online. Our friends at betonline.net have you covered with all the props odds and lines you could possibly want, including Missouri against Tennessee. The Tigers getting 21 currently. That number has not moved. 57 the over-under as well. Not really that interested in either one of those at this point, but I am interested in the fact that the Buffalo Bills, no longer the Super Bowl favorites. No, that is now the Philadelphia Eagles. Just slight favorites over Buffalo. Kansas City checking in at third. That actually does make sense to me because the Eagles should have an easier path through the NFC. So regardless though, maybe you're bored by this NFL talk and you're like, hey, get to hockey. Well, there's hockey, there's NBA, there's mixed martial arts, boxing, the whole thing. The Pauls are bound to fight somebody again. So throw down some money on it over at betonline.net where the game starts. A couple of Missouri fans on YouTube helpfully pointed out the Mo miracle, the massive TJ Mo catch and run from 2010 that saved Missouri's bacon against San Diego State about a dozen years ago. You know what? I, I'm. It's called the Mo miracle, but to me, you could call it the Mo miracle slash block slash Jackson block because Jarrell Jackson throws what is maybe the best block in Missouri history on this play right at the moment to free up T.J. Moe. Well, Jarrell Jackson takes out not one, but two players, including the guy who's right in front of Moe along that left sidelines, allows him to just break free and run into the end zone for what was a, a pretty lucky and unlikely play for the Tigers. But you know what? Even though that's a a really good call, it still doesn't quite hit the weirdness level that I was hoping for because, yeah, that's a very unlikely play and just a spectacular block by Jarrell Jackson. But it wasn't as though it doesn't reach the weirdness of a fifth down or a bicycle kick or indeed even the, hey, a, a roughing the punter penalty when the ball snapped 40 yards over his head. So... A really good call there, one I should have definitely brought up, but still just kind of makes my point that the weirdness factor always seems to go against the Tigers. And by the way, since I didn't do my usual project run play uniform talk last week, well, I did think that the gold face mask this week worked much better. As I sort of alluded to in previous segments, I just thought that the sailor tiger with the gold tops and the gold face mask. It was just a little bit too much change all at once, but I thought this past Saturday, despite the disappointing Missouri loss, a very sharp looking uniform for Missouri, the traditional black with the gold bottoms, black helmets, and you know, Hey, the gold, gold trim, the gold painted face mask, obviously a little bit different, but Just a subtle change. It's just one subtle change versus, I don't know, one subtle change and two pretty massive changes all at once. It was just a little bit too much, those previous uniforms. But this kind of change where you change it up every week and it's it's a little bit less radical, I, I think that's kind of the best of both worlds. But hey, that's just my opinion. But you know what? Here's another opinion that you need to hear. You need to check out Locked On Sports today because... After this show's over, you need a recap of the biggest games, the biggest stories in the world of sports, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available 
on Odyssey, YouTube, or wherever you get yo podcasts. So, until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks as always for listening to Locked on Mizzou.